Why are some supplements harmful? That's one of the most critical, important points to review. And there are multiple studies on this. And the main supplemental ingredients that are dangerous, the main two, the biggest two that are dangerous are folic acid, which is linked to cancer in, in multiple studies, and vitamin A, which is retinol or acetyl palmitate. Those are the two most dangerous things to supplement. And there are studies on multivitamins containing folic acid and vitamin A showing an increased risk of cancer from people taking those supplements. So here's a one, there's a 10 year study with women multivitamins with folic acid increased breast cancer risk by 20 to 30%. And there's studies on folic acid supplements al alone, where here's another study, a six year study where folic supplements increased all cause of death, all cause of cancer deaths by, 40, by about 43%. So I'm saying here that folate is what's found in vegetables and beans. And folic acid is a synthetic substance that doesn't have the same biochemical properties as, fo as folate does. And when we eat a healthy diet, we're eating vegetables, we're eating plenty of folate, and that protects us against birth defects when we're pregnant, that protects our body against getting cancer. But when we, but so instead of teaching people that folate deficiencies could lead to neural tube defects when pregnant or other heart defects, and encouraging people to eat green vegetables when they're pregnant, the medical profession and the health authorities recommend people take a folic acid supplement, which takes the place of having to eat vegetables. And it's true, it does reduce the risk of neural tube defects, but it does so by increasing the risks of other problems, such as cancer in both the child and the mother and later life effects. And we take folic, there's folic acid in supplemental and nutritional yeast, in bread, in soy milks, almost any B vitamin complex has folic acid in it. And it's cheap, it's synthetic, it's, you know, it's what, but in any case, um, the body can't keep folic acid out of the cell. It's absorbed too readily, even when you don't need it. And it promotes cellular replication. And even though it promotes cellular replication, which allows the neural tube to replicate when the child is developing, the replication it allows as an adult is cancer promoting. Now, I am making this radical statement. I think I'm the only person I've heard make this statement that the current health authorities' recommendations for people to take folic acid during pregnancy contributes to the amount of childhood cancer deaths and the explosion of both acute blastocytic leukemia and brain tumors in children who are obviously the leading cause of deaths in children other than accidents are from diseases like uh, from acute blastocytic leukemia. And my claim is based on the fact that most women of childbearing ages and most people understand that they're supposed to watch their folic acid level when they're pregnant to prevent neural tube defects. And if we were, in, if we were successful in educating the public on that issue, then why couldn't have we instead educate the public on the importance of eating green vegetables when they're pregnant? Because it's the consumption of green vegetables, not just during pregnancy, but even prior to conception, that is linked to reduced rates of children with, breath, with um, acute blastocytic leukemia and neural tube defects and heart defects and brain defects and shunts. And we're saying that multiple defects are caused by lack of vegetables in the diet and autism and brain tumors. And, and plus, we also have studied the fact of luncheon meats, not just during pregnancy, but even years prior to conception, affecting the risk of brain tumors and childhood cancers. Luncheon meats in the mother's diet before she conceives the baby. So I'm saying this was a missed opportunity to instruct women on the opportunity to eat green vegetables to get folate. And people eating healthy plant-based diets or nutritarian diets like I recommend, their folate levels are in the upper range of normal. They're sometimes out of the normal range being high. Taking more folate or more folic acid isn't beneficial for people who have adequate folate. And you, so we're just, but I'm saying it's a, it's a big mess in the scientific community today that we've gone in a completely wrong direction. It's like using high blood pressure pills instead of getting people to cut salt out and exercising to eat right. Or to using, we, 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 look, we look to a pill and that's like a medication. It's not a supplement. It's like, it's a, it's a synthetic version of what the real thing's supposed to be, right? So that's the yeah. first thing to think. And then the Cochrane reviews, they do reviews. The Cochrane are the Norway, Norwegian and Scandinavian group that are not funded by drug industry or by governments or the right business or industry. They do independent analysis of multiple studies and they show that taking these supplements, particularly vitamin A, is linked to increased risk of all-cause mortality. 
So we're talking here about, now I'm mentioning a review of 68 trials studied by the Cochrane Review, showing a 16% increased risk of death from the typical amounts of vitamin A added to, mo added to the supplements. You know what I mean? Um, so we're talking about not super high doses, just the normal amounts. And even beta carotene has been linked to increased risk of death from lung cancer, but also about a 17% high risk of um, death from heart disease from people who take beta carotene long-term. The point is, is that, that these supplemental ingredients we're mentioning are better received in the natural form from food with their complexes. Like for example, there are hundreds of different carotenoids. And when you take one, you don't absorb adequately of the others. You take a high dose, even, even vitamin E, there are eight different fragments of vitamin E. When you take one vitamin E fragment, you're not getting the full symphony of vitamin E had you been eating vegetables, beans, and nuts to get your vitamin E, you know, beans and nuts to get your vitamin E. So we're talking about um, there are certain nutrients that are particularly um, not wise to take. And let's review them one more time. Folic acid, vitamin A, beta carotene. You shouldn't be taking iron if you don't need it or copper if you don't need it. Even if there's a deficiency of iron, sure. And even selenium is not a great idea to be taking selenium in a supplement. And the main reason for that is because our natural diet that we're eating is adequate in selenium. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to eat Brazil nuts that are rich in selenium because there's so much beneficial health effects from eating even a couple of Brazil nuts a week. And the minute you start taking selenium in a supplement, then you can't eat Brazil nuts because you all go over, you get too much selenium in your diet that makes the Brazil nuts potentially risky to eat if you're already to have your selenium receptors already filled. The point yeah. is it's better to get a lot of these things from real food and the food, and we have the foods that give it to us, you know? Yeah. And real quickly, would you add vitamin E to that list? There's some research showing that supplemental vitamin E could be linked to some negative health outcomes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm putting vitamin E as part of that list. And the main reason is that when we take the vitamin E from nuts and seeds, we get a, a symphony orchestra of vitamin E fragments. And when you take a supplement of vitamin E, you're just taking one of those many fragments and it, it's not going to give you the same effects or the, and it yep. may even interfere with absorption. So it's better to get the vitamin E from real food as well. Yeah. And uh, just real quick, someone asked about nutritional yeast. Dr. Furman is not saying nutritional yeast is bad. He's saying supplemental supplement like when nutritional yeast is fortified if it's got folic acid added to it then all the things you just heard about folic acid are present with the yeast so um getting a uh unfortified or at least not fortified with folic acid nutritional yeast can be a great idea right we need nutritional yeast to be not fortified we need soy milks and plant milks to not be fortified with b vitamins that contain folic acid we, we have to look at the labels and not eat things that are fortified with folic acid because people are taking their vitamins with folic acid, they're cheap vitamins, and they're also then taking foods with more folic acid in them as well. So it really complicates things. And it's amazing. Yeah. We're talking about, it takes decades to increase risk of cancer of doing something wrong, decades. And even six or 10 years studies showing increased risk of cancer grossly underestimates the negative potential of these supplements because they're not studying 30 years of use and people are taking them their whole life.